the Horror Hangout, the podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and then talk about them. My name is Luke Condor with Kate, and I'm joined by my regular co-host, Mr. Mr. Ben Errington. Was that intro right? I feel like I've missed some bits out. It was right. It, oh, it was better than last week's. Correct. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, last week was pretty, pretty much a fail. I liked it though. I liked I liked the haphazard nature of it. It was chaotic. Yeah, I like a bit of punky chaos. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, how are you going? What, what's the crack? I'm all right. The crack is... What's the crack apart from between the cheeks of my ass? Um, it's... It's, yeah, it's all good. Everything's good. I'm well. How are you? That's bad. I've got a cat got me um, this giant can of iron brew. Wow. How many uh, milliliters is that? Uh, I don't know. It might be a trivia question. Let's <laughs> <Seems like that. laughs> so have a look at it. Let me have a look at it. It's like a kind of special That's bloody brew. massive. Jesus. <laughs> that has got to be, I reckon, 660 mil. That's my guess. Mm, okay, well, I'll, oh, I'll answer it later on. Oh. <laughs> okay. So uh, so, this is an honourable mention episode. We've got one. We've got like one film left on the list, but we're having a couple of honourable mentions, and then, and then we're maybe going to have a dishonourable mention. Yeah, maybe we'll do an honourable mention each. See, just if anyone's listening to this podcast and they're really hyped to see what number one is, or listen to the number one, we're just delaying it as yeah. long as we possibly can. Edging, I think, is the term, the terminology. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so, yeah, we'll do two honourable mentions and two dishonourable mentions. So this week's episode is my honourable mention, my choice, as a film that wasn't on the list, which kind of made me feel a little bit, you know, I was thinking, hard, I was thinking about this, because by. there's like, there's no other David Cronenbergs on the list. And I don't, is there any other like proper body horror films on the list? Um, I guess The Thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But yeah. if, even then, when I think of body horror, I kind of feel like it's your main character is experiencing the, the American horror Were- changing. America, American yeah, Werewolf? That, yeah, that, that, that change scene. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> You're wrong, Luke. And I mean, I've just given it an, in, an, an ounce of thought. If I give it a real good... Every film, I've well, got let's, let's not Let's not dwell on how wrong I am. Um, so, but before we get into all that, um, you done any guffs this week? Uh, oh, done a couple. You know, I've done a couple, uh, a yeah. couple of foul-smelling ones. There was <laughs> I watched a, I watched a Netflix original called Tau. Yeah, which I saw the trailer is, for that, and I was like, nah, see the trailer for that? I'll skip that. Um, it was all right, you know. So it's, I mean, it's about a woman who's held captive in like a futuristic house, and uh, she there's like an AI program that runs the house, um, which has been invented by the evil man who's keeping her there, um, and it's vo- the the uh, AI is voiced by Gary Oldman. Yeah. Um, and it stars Michael Monroe from uh, It Follows. Um, it was all right. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't fantastic. It was a bit kind of OTT in places. Um, the villain is that dude from Deadpool. Is it Ed Screen? Screen. Ed Screen. Is he like a rapper? Ed or something? Screen. Ed Screen. It's like a what London rapper. Is he? Is he a rapper or something? Well, in real, well, in real life, he's a rapper. I think, well, Ed I, Screen. It looks like, it looks like Up one. next, Ed Screen. <laughs> With some rhymes, um, yeah. Th- there were, the there rhyme, were man. yeah. There were a couple of really bad performances in this film. There was like a there was a character near the start of the film. There's no well, facial expressions from the AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's absolutely zero um, emotional range. I mean, nothing. Yeah, there was a there was a guy in it, and I was like, if this guy is in the film for the whole film, I actually don't know if I can watch it. It was making me like annoyed. Well, it's, it's green. It's green. No, no, no. Just okay. like just like another random person. Yeah, very um, old. Man. But, but yeah, in terms of in terms Fresh of being like Oscar. A, Gary Oldman, <laughs> I didn't shit. I didn't, I didn't re- realize it was Gary Oldman. I didn't recognize him initially. Yeah. It was only only sort of like halfway through the film when I kind of had, had a look. I was like, oh, whose voice is that? Could they because, not um, change the voice setting? Like my dad used to put Ozzy Osbourne on his sat nav. Could they not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> could they not? Shut up! <laughs> I, I would have loved. I would have loved if the AI was voiced by Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. Bloody dog shit everywhere. So, Mike, was she alright there? She, I mean, she's great. I mean, she is. She is a really good. She's really good in this sort of lead role as the sort of um, um, final girl, sort of final girl, sort of. But she's got a post final girl. Yeah, she's got her wits about her. She's yeah. uh, incredibly um, resourceful and a little bit feisty. A little bit feisty. Um, and she like yes, yeah, she was the best thing about this film by far. 
there was some some of the CGI was nice, some of the visu- uh, visuals were nice, um, but you know it was pretty average. I don't think it will live long in the memory. Okay, good. You do, uh, you and also go. the worst yeah. use of a, a Wilhelm scream that you'll ah! ever. <laughs> exactly that. The worst use of one you'll ever hear. It is so mind bogging, mind bogglingly. Mind bogging. My mind was bogged. It's boggled so hard it's lost the fucking. It happens, and I go, no, that cannot be. They've just like got they, in post production. Oh, like an effect. Oh, just a shit. Just a shit house. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's that, and I also saw Hotel Transylvania Free. Summer Vacation, which I guess is kind of relevant because it's all the all the animated um, classic horror characters. Is Dracula, this a new, new thing? Is this a the mummy? This is a new one. Yeah, it came came out yeah. just 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 a week gone. Um, so it's like got Adam Sandler's voice, Andy Samberg, Selena Gomez. I've kind of always kind of hated this franchise because m- my daughter is like a real big sort of fan of it. She used to watch yeah. the original sort of over and over and over, and I've always been a bit annoyed by it. I don't know why, and. This was probably the best of the three, but okay. still a bit. But I've still not a bit. Any, not seen any of them. I think I had good things about the first one, but um... yeah, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, okay. It's just not my favorite. Not my favorite. So, um, and then I, I did also see Mission Impossible Fallout, um, which was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Loads of great sort of action and remind them some of the action. I mean, I know I know some of it was shot with IMAX cameras, but it really did remind me of the Dark Knight. Um, just that sort of slow, slow, tense build and action sequences that go on for ages, but kind of like slow down halfway yeah. through and then pick up, and then it was just, it was, it was like that. It felt really good. And how was our, our boy Simon Pegg in it? Was he alright? Yeah, Simon. Pegg, I mean, he's he does what he can with that with, in this franchise, doesn't he? He's, he's not given a great deal to do most of the time, but he's there and he's he looks happy about it. Henry, Ca- Henry, Henry Cavill was good. Um, he's English. L- l- I didn't even know he was English until yeah. I heard him recently. He's, and like, I, and I he's f- like posh English, right? He's not like real yeah. English. It's not like me and you. Yeah, he's, he's, not, a... <laughs> he's not real English. He's not bloody real English. Like, though, up north, and bloody... He's like yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the posh heads. Uh, yeah, but he, he does really well in this. And he afterwards, he said he wouldn't mind being James Bond. And this is probably the only the first film since... Well, actually, Man, Man from Uncle, he was kind of Bondy. But like, do you feel yeah. like he's too too muscly? Too muscly to be James Bond. Well, he, maybe he, he looks like a bodybuilder, a right? So yeah, like he's he is incredibly um, wide. And he's incredibly broad to the point where like his ripe, arms are so short ripe. and <laughs> his arms are so short and stumpy. It's a bit like yeah. no. I, I saw the the trailer, and it's it's because his boobs are so big and broad. <laughs> his shoulders, his arms are like they've sunken into him a little bit. Yeah, they do. But uh, yeah, it was good. Mission Impossible Fallout, like, probably the best, probably the best of the Mission Impossible films. It's, they're kind of like bomb films, aren't they? You can kind of just watch one and not have to worry about what came before or after. You kind of they kind of explain the overarching. Um, I quite like the. Uh, was the last one Rogue Nation? I thought it was quite good. Rogue Nation, Ghost Protocol was that before that? Oh, maybe I was thinking of that one. I don't know. They kind of, they kind of. Yeah. To be fair, they kind of all blur into one with me a little bit, except except perhaps this one. Okay, and, I'm, and I'm, number, I'm excited number two, to watch this one. long air. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, so I don't. I, I didn't really watch that much. I finished Outlast finally, um, yeah. which is the horror game where you're running away in, in the mental asylum. That's um, you, you're a fan of Resident Evil Seven, right? You yeah you like it. Ha, like on a scale of oh. one to ten, what would you what would you place Ooh. it? I mean, it's a high eight. I think. I think this is on par. Uh, it's for different reasons. It's not quite got the same hot, sticky atmosphere that Resi Seven has. Three seven, okay. really, you can sort of smell the sort of rot as you're sort of walking through the house. But this yeah. has got, in terms of just genuine scares being chased around the dark, it's it's. But it is full of jump scares. I know you're not a fan of jump scares, but it is. It just adds to the sort of um, um, fun fun house quality of it. Jump all. scares in games, I cu- like. This is the thing, right? I'm a fan. I'm. I don't mind jump scares if they're done right and they feel earned. This this what yeah. this is this, something I've mentioned before. And I think in games. Yeah. Usually a jump scare because you're so invested in it because like you're bloody doing it, mate. Yeah. Uh, I feel like ju- I could I can deal with jump scares in games a lot better than I can in films. Most of the time in films, I just feel annoyed at the film for. Yeah. Well, jump scares thing. in films don't tend to very rarely get me, but like in in Outlast, there's some jump scares where I I screamed like a little girl. Oh! <laughs> <Like it's somebody. laughs> you did a Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Pretty much. Ah! Afterwards, <laughs> I um. 
I had to like go on YouTube and I started watching loads of Let's Plays just to see if oh, all right. other grown men were <laughs> reduced to we're screams. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's. I would say, for pure like fun, scary gameness, it's it's, it's one of the the best games I've ever played. But um, oh. yeah, it's um, cool story. So... it does get kind of resy ish at the end as well. Okay. Maybe I need to uh, give it a go then, because I've always looked at it and thought, nah. Mainly because it looks bloody horrible. Oh, I've heard um, the second one that came out, although it looks a lot better and it's like a lot more polished, um, the actual gameplay isn't quite as fun or no. as scary. So, yeah. Oh, Do the first one it. first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm still playing God of War at the moment, so I need to crack, How long crack one that off game? into that. That's, oh, well, I've not been playing it like constantly, but it is pretty pretty long. Um, and very, very intense. Uh, tugs on the on heartstrings as well. So, so emotional. I'd like to give it a go, but again, it's still like 50 quid. In the, uh, so I can't bear to spend that much money on a game. Yeah, there's a lot lot to spend. But uh, yeah, definitely give it a go if you get a chance. Yeah, man, it's on the list. Uh, the, the only other guff I did, I watched um, The King of Comedy. Have you seen The King of Comedy? It's oh, not, yeah. Not horror. But it, uh... I was... Uh, I was pretty much blown away by it like it's Robert De Niro yeah yeah Robert De Niro plays a sort of psychopathic comedian wannabe comedian who is got this um obsession with this guy called Jerry uh it's Jerry Lewis but he plays like Jerry Sandberg got to give him a different name um and he ends up kidnapping him to force him to let him be on his Friday night chat show thing for like oh, a wow. routine um but like it's, it's so you know there's those ones where there's ex- Ricky Gervais is like a king of this, but the sort of the cringy sort of oh don't you can see <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how bad it's going to go. The fact that he's going to go on this show on live TV and he keeps you know he's sort of going to be like terrible with doing this sort of stand up routine and it builds to that so much throughout the throughout the film. But then when it does come to that, it it doesn't go how I expected it to. It's not, it's not amazing. He's not like an amazing stand up, but um, it's just uncovers parts of his character and I was like wow that was surprisingly deep and really good yeah. and I was like kind of just amazed by it so I've never really heard that many people talking about it and it, it was like fantastic like a really good five star film oh really okay yeah, um, I don't think I have seen it now so who's it, who's it directed by Martin Scorsese oh uh, it is Martin Scorsese it's not, oh, it's, not it. it's not a comedy but it is funny um, it's oh, not right, like okay. a dark, dark talk, talk when you meant Dark, dark drama. When you mentioned just then, like when you're watching a film and you kind of like cringe and you go, do you ever get this experience where like you watch a film and even though you've seen the film numerous times, when something bad's about to happen, you still kind of like anticipate it and go like, yeah. oh, nah, don't do that. Oh, yeah. Even though you've seen it so many times, it's almost like you're playing out this parallel universe version of the film in your head. Yeah. Where you're like, obviously it's nowhere near as interesting because like nothing happens. But in your head you're thinking, God, bloody hell, just... Don't do that. Like in this film, Jeff, Jeff, uh, Seth, sorry, Jeff or Seth, just up, see the fly and go, no, <laughs> just get it out. Well, it's because like you, you kind of know, we know like the narrative structure of films has to have a, a bad thing happen to make the story work. And like, because we know it's coming, we can like see the trap door. Especially with, like Pixar films and stuff like that. I'm always thinking, yeah. soon it's going to get sad. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it always starts happy. I'm like, it'll get especially, pretty sad especially soon. If you're, especially if you're introduced to, like, a really lovely uh, relationship between, like, father and son, between, like, mm. a couple, between, like, do yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? As soon as you're introduced to that early in a film, you're like, oh, no, oh, what's going to happen? Mufasa's about to die. Like, I just always expect it. Yeah. That was heartbreaking. Uh, okay, so, yeah, that's, that's all the guffs. Um, on to the main guff. <laughs> the main, whatever you call that, gas. The main. <laughs> the main it is pretty gaseous this film yeah when you think about it so this was your pick this was yes. David Cronenberg's The Fly why don't you tell us a little bit about it ah. so The Fly is a 1986 science fiction body horror film directed and co-written by David Cronenberg um, a brilliant but eccentric scientist begins to transform into a giant man fly Hybrid. <laughs> it just what, begins to transform into a giant man. He already, he always is just an old man. Why giant? <laughs> he's just a, by a radioactive a, man. Why does it say giant? He's still a ma- He's still a man-sized fly. He's not a giant man-sized fly. No. So he transforms yeah. into a man-fly hybrid after one of his experiments goes horribly wrong. Horrible. Nice. Uh, so there isn't an Empire normal thing that we read from, but they do have like an essay on it, and I, I picked out 
uh, some bits. This is what they say. Genius scientist Brundle has found a way to transport matter instantly from one place to another. But when he tests his theory on himself, he becomes a mutant, half man, half fly. Science fiction has rarely been this emotionally powerful or, ironically, for a film with a mutant insert at its centre, so deeply human. It's got 91% of Rotten Tomatoes, 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb. Um, and it's uh, it's fucking a, a classic, stone cold classic film. A hundred percent, wonderful. It was a great this, one. Uh, what's your background with this film? Why, why did you pick this? What made you think? So, yeah, so this is a film that I've kind of. It's one of the horrors. So like, there's a few horrors for me which I saw really young, probably too young, and kind of just kept going back to sort of over and over again. So for me, it's like Exorcist, um, The Thing, uh, Aliens. And then later, Alien. But yeah, just one of those films that my mum introduced me to because that was her thing, introduced me. Here's something that's going to scar you. You know, I kind of got used to that pretty quickly. Um, she showed me that she showed me this film. Obviously, I think she covered my eyes during a few bits. But yeah, just just one of those films that's like, it is a great film. But because of that nostalgia element, it just elevates it. There's that little bit more for me up to one of the... And obviously, it's, it's, it's tragic. It is one of the most tragic yeah. sort of films and it's Jeff Goldblum's best performance, I think, um, yeah. in terms of just everything he brings to the character. Considering he was fairly unknown at this stage, or, or not necessarily unknown, but was considered not a very bankable star, I think, for this film. What, what, uh, I don't really know Jeff Goldblum's background. Was he a circus performer? Is that him doing trapeze? Is he the one playing piano? Like, what is he? <laughs> Um, I don't think it's him doing trapeze thing. Is he turning thing, into a I, fly? Is he, yeah. is he really a fly, man? <laughs> um, the, I don't think it's him doing the trapeze stuff because I think you see at one point it's just a man in a funny gold bloom wig. So I don't know much about his background, but yeah, this was his first sort of big Hollywood sort of film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he just, he brings so much. I mean, there's such a range. Like for a leading man to go through such a such a range of sort of emotions from start to finish he just brings so much to the role and i think gina davis is great as well even though mm. gina uh, gina davis was, was sort of best in the 80s and early 90s wasn't she um she was in the exorcist tv show recently and uh yeah it was oh, all okay oh okay um, yeah it was all i was, so I was surprised like so i, I, I was same as you i watched this as growing up and it's always been a sort of favorite i've just never really thought about it too much and it's you know sometimes when you you watch a film and you suddenly are reminded, oh my god, this film is is fucking fantastic. Like the score, as soon as that comes in, yeah, the score is amazing. It's got this really sort of no scene seems to be wasted. Like nothing feels it just constantly sort of no. keeps you flowing through the story. Uh, it feels like a fully complete. Feels very classic, classical, like a, almost like a Universal monster movie. Like yeah. there's a classic tragedy to it where you know it's like *Beauty and the Beast*, but in reverse, uh, where she sees the the man becoming the beast instead of mm. becoming human. And it's just like a really whole, wholly complete, thoroughly devastating, full of gore, fun to slocky, just enough bit of slock, body horror, like in the best way. Like some of the the effects still really work. Um, it's aged really well. Like it's over for, over thirty years old now, and it has aged really well. I don't think there's one moment where I was a bit like, "Well, that's been naff." It just all yeah, kind of looks yeah. looks looks wonderful. Even the, um, the the vomiting bits, like still like, yeah really got to me but it's yeah it's, it's just film. it's just that practical effects thing from this sort of era when mm. it's done when it's done well it just it just even if it doesn't quite look right it just there's something about it it has this sort of odd it's like it's just looking in on the bizarre just very very strange but yeah it does sort of the progress from the character the pacing of the film is really really well done because you know another another director another writer could have easily just gone right well he's gone in the machine Mm. Now this is what's going to happen, and now he's going to roam about the city killing people. Like we don't get that. Um, is if if I'm not mistaken, he doesn't kill anybody. Um, he hurts people. But yeah, have you seen the fly two? By the way, have you? Have you maybe I haven't seen the fly two, but I did. Okay. I did sort of have a look at some bits just to sort of. Yeah, so prep, that is, that is more on stuff. that sort of. Yeah, which which fly, like <laughs> which yeah wouldn't have worked as well i don't think is the fact that he's so isolated as a character and he's basically left to experience his his downfall his metamorphosis completely alone most of the time yeah so it's just it's just that sort of isolation that and it you keeps kind of... you um you never really once lose sympathy for jeff goblin's character like it's right towards the end even when he's doing sort of their sort of dark stuff 
you're still with there there with him and yeah. the sort of the tragedy of it and it's uh, uh so i saw one of my friends posted uh on facebook a deleted scene that i didn't know was, was from this where he sort of puts a baboon and a cat ah uh, yeah and he mute like fuses them together and it comes so out does that like, scene that scene exist then it has been it, it was shot it was shot yeah uh so he puts the baboon and the cat in the the thing to fuse them. I think it's a way to test what he's going to try later on. Um, and they come out all mangled and they attack him. And he's, it goes into a bit of when he's like, you know, uh, I think I talked about a basket case. They're holding the the fake thing, and they're yeah. running around the room doing that. And he beats it up with yeah. a with a like an iron pipe and kills yeah. it. And I was like, I'm glad they didn't put that no. in the film. Well, because I, I think I read about that where they they said it would just you'd lose all sympathy for him because even killing yeah. like a cat a cat baboon hybrid is still like killing an animal so like audiences probably he, wouldn't he react was, it was kind of cruel for him to do that um yeah. but i mean um he maintains so, sorry he maintains like a lot like seth brundle even when he's the metamorphosis is really far along mm. like he maintains these human elements like it might just be in something he says like the dialogue's so good there are so many bits of dialogue in this where i just think it's just it's just pretty much perfect and iconic as well. Like there are certain lines in this where you're like, Oh yeah, this is where that line yeah. originated. Well, in it's, in it's sort of most well-known form. So yeah, well, it's, the, be very, be very afraid, be afraid, be afraid, be, be very afraid, That's be afraid, from be very afraid. Like when she says it, it's almost like, because we know it so well, yeah. it's almost like, it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. But, but at the same time, you're like, that was the first time it was, it was uttered. Yeah. So the, the only thing I was going to mention before we go into the details a bit more was um, David Cronenberg films. I like Cronenberg films, but they're always very cold. They're always, almost sort of like me- metallic and calculated. But this film is like really warm. Like it's mm. um, the relationships feel. Uh, someone told me as well that this is like this is the best love story ever in a horror film, and I think it's that relationship between Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis that really sort of warms up David Cronenberg's sort of colder. Nastier yeah. sort of parts of his films. I, th- I think they were going out in real life as well, Jeff and Jeff and yeah, Gina. Okay. So so obviously that adds just that extra extra yeah. layer, you know, when in their performance, yeah. and uh, especially when they're getting it on, because you know he did it for real, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He, actually... he, knew, he knew he knew where he was going. He knew, he knew where roots. he was going. Yeah. Didn't need a road map. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> so the, the key players in the film, we've got Jeff Golden Blum. As uh, Seth Brundle, he's uh, sort of an amazing, incredible scientist who uh, I think he said at one point he's not like a he's not very good at the details, but he's good at managing the product, so mm. managing the project. So, and he's made this teleportation device. We all know that. Um, Gina Davis uh, plays Veronica Queef. Uh, she's uh, <laughs> what? Oh, Queef. Oh, yeah. Queef. Yeah. Queef. Uh, Queef. She... Queef and Queef. <laughs> she plays. Um... I don't, um, what's like a journalist. The journalist. That's what we're looking for. Thanks, thanks, Ben. Uh, a right. journalist. So she she takes stories and puts them onto paper for people to read. It's, uh, yeah. The bloody mainstream reading. media. <laughs> yeah. and there's only really ever like one other character, uh, John Getz. He plays Staffis. His name is Staffis Bar- Bar- yeah. Borans. That's so close <laughs> to Staffis Boranis, who's like, wasn't he the bad guy? One of the the leaders in. Um, <laughs> God knows. It's just a ridiculous Staphis Borans. Have you met him? Hello, I'm Staphis Borans, you'd say. <laughs> what? It sounds like a Sasha Baron Cohen character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hello, it does. I am Staphis. He, um... <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so that, that's about it. There are some other characters, but we'll get into them in a little bit, but not... The, these are the three characters in it. It's like a play, almost. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, so how does, how does it start? Your, this is your favourite uh, film of all time? So there are like some sort of event, some sort of press event where um, there's like journalists and scientists and everyone's like, everyone's kind of uh, chatting, mingling, talking about projects. And then it kind of just opens immediately with uh, Seth Brundle talking to Veronica and basically just hyping himself up. He's, he's a hype man. He's a hype man for himself. Yeah. He's basically saying, I've got this amazing thing that's going to change the world. And, uh, ev- that, and she's like, oh, well, that's what everyone else here is saying. It's like, yeah, but they're lying. I actually have got someone that's going to change the world. You're never going to believe it. Yeah, and everyone then, else has got their fingers crossed. Look at him! <laughs> look at him! Yeah, look, look at him! <laughs> look at him over there with yeah. his hair and his features and his. And yeah. he drinking something at some point. He's just having a. He's having a st- can of Stella. Yeah, and he, his stomach doesn't agree with it or something. He, he can't, <laughs> can't drink alcohol. 
<laughs> he's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. So he can't drink alcohol, and then he's also like he suffers with like motion sickness as well, like a yeah. in a in a in a cab on the way home as well. Uh, so Seth basically says, "Come back to mine, and I'll show you something." Yeah, wink, wink. No, it's, no. it's one note from like being a serial killer at this point, but it, like yeah. it seems sweet enough. Where it's like he's not going to kill me. So she goes she goes with him. Um, <laughs> You're not going to kill me, are you? Are you? Are you? No. Don't be silly now. Yeah, so he basically says, come back to my, uh, my but gaff. But he's so, he's so like, um, uh, he, he doesn't just get down to the point. Here's my telepods. They teleport. Like, he keeps saying, so what are we doing here? And he goes, Harada. It's like jamming on his keys. It's like playing like a jazz band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, Jeff, why the fuck are we here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All it is, is just, it's just he's, play, he's playing the long game here. What he's doing is he's showing her every, everything he's got going on. He's a bit musical. Bit, he loves a bit of the science. Mm. He's trying to basically, it's a lot, he's trying to get into her pants. Um, which yeah. it, and it, it does work, so he can't argue with his methods. Look at my giant telepods. Look yeah. at my giant telepods. You ever seen telepods bigger than this? Yeah. Um, and when he shows Biggest her the tele- telepods you've ever seen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And of course, he, he tells her, like, Here, here's my bloody invention. Have a look at that. Get your eyes around that. Have a look at this. And she's like, Oh, yeah. great. A, gi- a giant microwave oven. I bet you've got a really great jukebox around here somewhere, too. And he's just like, You sarcastic bitch. Give me that stocking. Give me that stocking. <laughs> yeah. He takes this the is, stocking. Yeah. This, is, this is a bit weird because you think, Of everything you're going to do, I'd be like, I want to do something more impressive than that. Just like a bit of stocking oh think, yeah i thought you meant like uh, if anything you were going to take off of your persons why would you take off like if, I, yeah. if my friend was like dude i've got a, my, a teleportation body do you want to try it i want to go i'm going to say take off my pants and like, <laughs> <laughs> somehow somehow you do it there you take off your pants without taking off your trousers and that's yeah. impressive <laughs> you just teleport, root around teleport them out of my trousers into my hands yeah. You've already you've already got yeah, your mate. head around the teleportation thing. <laughs> How did you do that? Well, De- degenerate and regenerate my pants into my hands. <laughs> Degeneration <laughs> pants. <laughs> um, yeah. So he, he says, basically, I'll show I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, queef, queef. Uh, so he takes off. She takes off Veronica. her stocking. Yeah, Veronica. <laughs> But yeah, he could have, she could have given him something else. You know? But she does say she, she doesn't have any jewelry because he does ask for jewelry first, yeah. which I guess would be more impressive. Because at least the, the the recreating that would have been mm. a lot more impressive. Do you know what I mean? Just he could have just had another stocking lying around. But obviously, it is. But she does believe. So he, he teleports the stocking from one teleport to the other, and he says, "By the way, at the back of the room, there's another teleport. That was prototype. It works, but it's janky. Whatever the hell that means." Um, and he. Yeah. He, he he teleports the stocking, and then she's like, "Wow, this is the best thing I've ever seen." I'm thinking that's the pretty standard cab magician in the box trick. I'm pretty sure he could have done yeah. that. Like, and and that even gets brought up a little bit later, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm a bit like, "Well, with Mrs. Gullible over here, <laughs> Mrs. Gullible." So basically, he just he just says like he's been working on this project for ages, and he kind of he kind of just wants to talk about it now. He's just he's been so alone. Mm. Um, with stock, with numerous stockings, uh, teleporting a back and forth. One, two, three, four. Um, yeah. So he, he basically wants um, her to keep the invention secret. Or doesn't she just like reveal? Doesn't she? She reveal says, to- "Oh, she gets a tape recorder out," and he goes, "What the hell's uh, that?" Uh, and then, and then she's like, um, "I'm a journalist." But did he not know that she was a journalist? Yeah, exactly. Who did he? Who did he think she was? Just a woman who goes to these science. She had, she had just said in the party. People have already told me they're the greatest. I've got to get a story tonight or something. I mean, he's good at telepods, but he ain't so good with the old common sense, it would seem, Mr. Brundle. Yeah. yeah. So she says, right, F off, I'm, I'm off. She's like, what, like, where is him off and then disappears? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, she goes to her. The next day, she's talking to who appears to be just her editor at Particle Magazine. It's like a new scientist sort of magazine. Oh, yeah. And he's, uh, I want to re- read that. <laughs> particle magazine um he's got he's got a beard he's got a, a suit he's well to do sort of dude uh but he's a bit uh a bit soily like something about him i just don't like he's a bit soily he's a bit of a dirty bastard he's the kind of yeah. man who would take that stocking if you gave him the stocking to teleport you'd never see it again you give it, it back to you it'd be crispy it'd be- be down in- oh god <laughs> <laughs> I microwaved it just like he did <laughs> yeah yeah but for some reason you're not quite as impressed when I do 
And that's the problem with you, Gina Davis. <laughs> yeah, Gina Davis. Gina um, Davis. So, oh yeah, so then Jeff Goblin turns up and he's like, look, don't, don't do the story. One word. Get that double cheeseburger. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> one word. <laughs> cheeseburger. Um, yeah. I was like, that's not the best way. That's the only... I don't... You can't go up to someone and just say the name of the food. If I went to someone and said, lasagna, <laughs> they wouldn't be like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You'd be like, offer... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. What? What if you don't like cheeseburgers? What if she's a vegan? What if she's a vegan? Yeah. In uh, the 80s? Yeah, maybe there weren't as many as back then. Uh, but maybe, maybe she's got a gluten, maybe Crohn's disease or something. Who knows? Yep. Cheeseburger. And then she's like <laughs> upset because she can't eat. <laughs> I've never had one. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had one. Why would you do that to me? <laughs> Fuck this. Yeah. Staffis. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Stan. Stan. Stan Fist. <laughs> Stan Fist. <laughs> um... <laughs> So then they, they go for dinner, and then I think he kind of convinces her, like, look, don't run the article. Don't do your tweet. Oh, you've already tweeted it. Oh, can't, shit. Can't get on top of this, just, media. Just, yeah. met, just met Seth Brundle, and he got these <laughs> telepods. Lol. <laughs> Microwaved my stocking. Hashtag um, teleport goals. <laughs> um, so, but it's like, look, don't do that. Stay, uh, stay with me. Live my life. Write a book. We'll make a podcast. We'll yep. um, make a documentary. Get Luther involved. It, it'll be golden. It'll be absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So and because he basically says that like it's not finished. Like, so even though he's doing well and he's making a lot of progress with this telepod, it's not finished. So he hasn't he hasn't been able to transport um, living matter. It's only inanimate objects he can do. Stockings, um, tights. Uh, socks, uh, <laughs> suspenders, it's underpants. It's mostly simple cottons and He struggles with he underpants, can... especially if they've got any stains on them because they, they come out yeah, the stains different. The living matter within the pants. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. It fuses the, the living matter with the pants. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah and I, you can never, and basically, you never get so clean. You know, we, we've all got like these microbial little bug life things living on us. Um, none of us are what? completely. Are you what, mate? <laughs> But like even like um, there's so many like little tiny, teeny tiny little living things within us. Like, are they not getting fused with? Do you know what I mean? Oh. Is it why are we not getting half microbed? Maybe that's it. Yeah. And also, yeah, I know. Well, we could think about this. Yeah, I can't even start to think about that because it's actually blowing my mind. So okay, okay. don't do, don't do that again because I might just have some sort of episode. Okay, here's another thing that might blow your mind. <laughs> Lasagna is it spelled with an E or an A at the end? Nobody lasagna. knows. Lasagna. Like, lasagna. Yeah, but, yeah, but well, it's, if you Google oh, yeah. lasagna with an E, you'll still. You'll still find lasagna. Yeah. Lasagna. Lasagna. Did you mean? Did you mean lasagna? Oh yeah. What about the one with an A on the end? Maybe that's, that's the. That's also legit. true. That's also what? True. I have never noticed that before in my whole life. Mind blown again. So. Oh wait, here we go. Lasagna means like one. Lasagna is all the layers ah, and cheese and stuff. Yeah. Lasagna with an A is just a singular sheet of that um, pasta. pasta. We've got to the bottom of it. Yep, <laughs> we did. Okay, um, so that's two mind blowing facts for you. Little bugs and lasagna sheets with an E. Um, so then, oh yeah, the next morning, um, she. Uh, Stapis is in her house, right? Or in a, is that the next in morning? Is he, is he done? Have, know, we, have, we, have, we, have we had the baboon yet? Okay, so there's the baboon first. In her house. Yeah. <laughs> in so, basically, <laughs> so basically, he decides to show her that, look, I can't... Where is he getting these baboons? Work. Yeah, so it, baboons must be expensive. And if, the, if it's not going to work... Also, like, the, the, the crew making it, so the uh, animal cruelty, you can't go around degenerating and regenerating baboons willy-nilly. <laughs> no, like, you can't. <laughs> this is the second second film on the podcast with baboons in that we've watched. Can you name the other one? <sighs> no. <laughs> you what can. I'll, I'll, try, I'll, try and, uh, I'll try and jog jog your memory. Deep Blue Sea? That's got f- loads no. of animals in it. The baboons barked at the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the omen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, well, in this one, the baboons got baked in the. Oven. <laughs> the baboons got baked in the big. Bad. B- bad. <laughs> the, in the big bad microwave oven. The baboons got. 
brutalized in the Ugh. big bad but I okay, can't right. don't worry about it we'll, we'll <laughs> don't worry about it. it I can't I can't, I can't get past it <laughs> so okay so the baboon it, it teleports it even though he knows it's not going to work and it comes out as a, a mush um, yeah. it's a fucking it's happened again for some reason um, yeah I mean, so, yeah, this is pretty hard. So you get, Baboon gets in, he's kind of like, all right, all right, mate, just don't worry about it, you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. And obviously, when when the Baboon comes out and the other telepod, he just slaps a bloody hand against the, or a bloody like a bloody limb of some mm-hmm. sort, and then you Dry receive it. spills out and white yeah. light and stuff, yeah. So basically, it's, it's the, the Baboon has been turned inside out, and it's like... <laughs> like that. Don't kill me. <laughs> just yeah. kill me. But and then he just carries on. He just carries on living a normal life as an inside-out baboon, just going yeah. down the street like, that. "Hey, yeah, huh, yeah, yeah, that boy." Was, was that another deleted scene? This is the same baboon. He re he sort of managed to reinvert himself, and then he got turned into a fuse of a cat the next time. Yeah, he was like, he's "Come back here, you, yeah, you're my honestly, baboon." Though, honestly, though, where's he getting the baboons from? Wait, right, so he's uh, sponsored, isn't he, by like Bartek Bartok? Ah, uh, right. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're providing certain things for him. So he does make out yeah. that like other, other scientists are involved making the actual objects like lasers and, you know, something else, a discombobulator. <laughs> uh, and and Seth's put them, <coughs> put them together. So basically, Seth is like a glorified bloody... What is he? Chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chef Goldblum. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a glorified <laughs> Chef Goldblum. Yeah. Um, and everyone else is providing all the ingredients. Yeah, so that's basically it. Yes. And then basically, <laughs> pretty much immediately after that, sorry, what were you going to say? No, sorry, no, sorry. Immediately this, after that, Gina yeah. Davis is like, I'm yeah. horny. <laughs> Just seen Baboon uh, inside out. And now, <laughs> you know. If you it... know, there's only a few things in this world that turn me on. <laughs> One of them. And some say, some say it's a weird sort of sexual fetish to have. But an inside out baboon really gets me going. Yeah. And Jeff is like, hey, come on. First of all, he puts the inside out baboon in a black bag and slings it out of the back. <laughs> yeah, throws it out the window. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of this. Let me just tidy up quickly. Putting like rubbish in the bin and baboon <laughs> in the in the trash. Um, putting the baboon in a bin bag. <laughs> putting the baboon in a bin bag and putting the bin bag in a bin. The bait baboon got binned. A bin <laughs> baboon the, got put baked. The ba- <laughs> <laughs> put the baboon in the bin and then in the bin bag and then the bin man comes to take the bin bag in the bin full of the bend, inside bend, out baboon. Bend the baboon. Bait, <laughs> bend, the, bend the baboon being baked backwards <laughs> and then binned. <laughs> bake, bake it backwards and bin it in a bin bag and in a bin. <laughs> you sound like, a, um, like an auctioneer. <laughs> Bend the baboon, he went backwards and got a baboon, the baboon, he's going to bend out the window, bend the baboon, and go in once, going twice, straight into the trash. <laughs> Anyone want to buy the big baboon? But Everyone want to buy the big, big, big bad inside that baboon? Big bad baboon. Okay, I can't keep doing it anymore, my mouth's going to no, Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they, they, they have sex, she spends the night. The next morning, um, Staffis is in her shower, naked. For some reason, yeah. and then we, then we kind of learned that oh, so they used to be together. He wants to get back with her, and he keeps get like feeding all these like really sleazy lines. Not once does he say cheeseburger. Like he's constantly <laughs> no. saying like, um, uh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to have sex. Let's have a sex." Yeah, he goes like he says something along the lines of, "I don't want to get back into a relationship with you. I just want." Some sex. nice, relaxing sex. He like, calls it relaxing or something like that. He goes, I just want a nice, long, relaxing shag. Yeah. Okay? He's pretty much That's like, all I want. You know Douglas Renham from the IT crowd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a bit like that. Father! What was that in uh, IT crowd where um, someone says he win- He wins the... Uh... Oh, yeah, so he's got a case against him about being like... Uh, um, over, like toxic masculinity or something. And he says, like, calm down, sugar tits. <laughs> this is he That's reminds me. He's basically the same guy, isn't he? Yeah, Stanfist. The, yeah. the name's Stanfist, and I just like to sling one up you. How's yeah. that sound for you? Yes. Look, Jen, okay. A fly. It's not for you, Jen. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so what happens now? So uh, so they they're getting together. Oh yeah, so he she has to 
she says she has to dump him basically because he's yeah. like he says he's going to print the magazine about it it's got the, the, the particle magazine ready to go it's got an illustrated picture of it and everything it's good to go um and she's like oh shit i'm gonna go sort this out just before this does he do the steak thing i think he does and then he's <sighs> yeah okay yeah yeah ow, ow, ow. <laughs> so yeah so basically after after he's had, had, a, had a go on old guinea de Vis, he's like that's it the computer doesn't know how to recreate flesh it's all about the flesh touching the flesh doing all that shit and so he gets a steak slams him, that yeah slams that in the tra- in the in the uh, telepod machine and then he cooks both bits the bit that's been t- teleported and the bit that hasn't yeah. and he's like tell the difference and Gina Davis is like this one tastes this one's sim- medium rare this one's this medium one's rare been disintegrated and reintegrated <laughs> yeah so she says it tastes synthetic so obviously that yeah. way Seth Brandel starts realising that the telepod for some reason is just giving it its own recreating it what it thinks that thing is Mm. So there yeah, he's like, so it doesn't know about the flesh. It doesn't know about the madness of the flesh. He says something like that. The poetry of the steak. The poetry of the it. steak. Yeah. So he said the computer doesn't know about that. So now I need to start teaching it. So he just goes up yeah. to the computer and starts whispering in its ear. So I was talking say some like Walt Whitman poems to it. Yeah. Some T.S. Lewis. Um, yeah. And then, and then not, not long after that, I think he manages to teleport the second baboon. Is that right? The, yeah, and they do it together and they celebrate. And he's about to order some Chinese food, and then she gets the magazine through. And then she's yeah. like, okay, this is all good, but I need to go wipe this shit off my shoe. What I, so she gets the magazine under the door, and it's got a lovely illustration of, of, of Seth Brundle on the front. And I think, who's done that? Who's, who's, who's done that? He's got a lovely, a lovely like oil painting, <laughs> lovely oil painting of his face, like looking perfect. Wearing exactly the same thing. It's just like, who's got hold yeah. of a photo? I suppose someone's got a photo of them. Staffist did it. He's a yeah. painter. But also, Painters. if I was Jeff Goldblum, I'd want to see it, and I'd want it framed. I would like to see it. If someone did that kind of cool painting of me, I'd want it on my wall. Because it's, like, it's got like the telepods in there and everything. It's got like it's really cool. It looks like an Arrow video DVD cover. Yeah, it looks badass. It'd be like yeah. it'd be like a picture of you, like like that, like with your books in the background and like a little yeah. laptop with Keith on it. Iron Brew in my hand. Iron Brew in your hand. Uh, what else? Cat and dog. Cat, cat and dog. <laughs> cat and dog cat and dog yeah cat and dog one under each arm <laughs> I don't know how that works um, okay so <laughs> so she's like don't worry I'm going to go do this and then we're going to come back and we're going to do some more sex uh, yeah. or something and then she goes he, go on. sorry uh, but I think Seth kind of worries while she's gone that he's like rekindling his relation, her relationship with uh, Stan Fist um, but obviously she's gone to like basically confront him and tell him he's a knob, mm. um, and he, and he's obviously I'm gonna bloody publish this story without you. Um, but then Seth he's uh, he's had a beer or two, isn't he? Back at the older, uh, he's had a couple of beers. Got a place. Yeah. So we must we got to talk about his apartment as well. Seth kind of lives in like what is it like a warehouse sort of like conversion. A, a warehouse yeah. conversion into like yeah. with a big sort of like sliding metallic it, it door. It could be could be done really nice. Um, you know if you if we were. Uh, not a duvet. What do you call it? A fro over one yep. of those telepods. It'd be you lovely in there that. if yeah. a man hadn't turned into a fly inside. Because <laughs> yeah. it turns out mess. He's a bloody messy one. Um, so yeah, basically he just gets the he gets the bollocks, doesn't he? He's had a couple of beers, a couple of cans of Stella again, and he gets the bollocks to yeah. teleport himself alone and singing nude. football, singing football chants to himself. <laughs> football crazy, chocolate mad. Grab a power pod and play football with the pod. lads. <laughs> Grab a telepod and teleport, stel- teleport across the room. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, smacking cans of lager together, cans of Stella. So he's completely um, naked. Imagine he got in naked and he just left his keys in, in his pocket or something. And he's like, shit! Yeah. I'm half key. Um, <laughs> so he gets in. I think we see the fly uh, landing there. Um, and then... I like it. The flies sort of flying around the room, and the baboon yeah. gets like a little bit annoyed by it. Oh, get away, you bloody yeah. shitty! It knew. It knew this. He's like, that's not going to be good in this with those telepods, there, is it? No. Just get rid of this fly. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he gets in. He comes out, and like he's. Is this is like a superhero origin story, but just yep. gone wrong? He gets out, and he's kind of like super, like strong and sweaty. <laughs> And, yeah, um, suave, like he's he oiled, like he's greased, like a, a Grecian wrestler, but with Jeff Goblin's head. And <laughs> yeah, like, so he's got, he so he's good. got like stre- strength, stamina. He wants to shag all the time. He's yeah. uh, at one hair. point, <laughs> back hair. At one, 
<laughs> super back hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's got like these really thick hairs on his back. He's got like sugar cravings. He's like nailing donuts and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he's kind of like speaking really fast, and he's he basically looks like he's on a bit of the old bit of, on a bit of the old nose powder. Yeah. You can see. Um, yeah. and, and, and basically, as he carries on, he kind of talks about the teleportation and, like, having purified his body. But, like, somehow yeah. it's, it's, it's broke him down and put him back together. But, like, he's, he's rejuvenated perfect. him. He's yeah. rejuvenated. Um, it's like, he's, a, he's, like a really good juice cleanse is what he's doing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, so Gina Davis tries to cut the bristly hairs on his back as well. And they, they're basically just, like, made of, what, <laughs> steel uh, or <laughs> scissors yeah. kind of, like, get through them. Yeah, like he seems pretty thick, coarse, he seems, thick hairs. Yeah. He seems pretty happy of them though. She's like, "I'm gonna cut him." He's like, "Oh, do you have to? I'm bloody loving." Yeah, he's, he's, he's like so into the because they're having sex at the time, aren't he? He's like so into that. He's like, "No, you're thinking about his back hair." But the funny thing is, like when I grew back hairs, not once did Cat say, "I think there's something wrong." <laughs> I think you're turning <laughs> into a fly. <laughs> I think you're turning into a fly because your sexual potency is off the charts <laughs> lately, Luke. <laughs> um, so. It culminates in like a, a massive argument when he says like you need to go through the process as well. We're going to be the dynamic duo, um, yeah. and he's trying to like shiver in the in the pod, but she says yeah. no, there's something wrong. At this point, I think his face is starting to bruise like an old banana as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he kind of like he loses his nut a few times. Like she, she, at one point, she says something. And he goes, "You're such a fucking drag." Like yeah, wow, yeah, so that's good impression. Yeah, you can already start to see like parts of him like he's becoming aggressive he's becoming like arrogant as well a little bit like that uh, before he like goes a- after she says that she won't go into the pod he says i'll go out and find someone who can and he has this sort of like mad sort of rant where he sounds like a sort of mad professor when he says about you're afraid to dive into the plasma pool oh yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. sort of says stuff like that like, says, like a like a psychosis like he's probably losing yeah, his mind he's yeah. losing his mind says something like so here's a quote from it he says you can't penetrate beyond society's sick, grey fear of the flesh. Drink deep or taste not the plasma spring. This is poetry not, of the stake. Yeah, poetry of the stake. And he says, I'm not just talking about sex and penetration. I'm talking about penetration beyond the veil of the flesh. A deep, penetrating dive into the plasma pool. I bet David Cronenberg wrote that bit. That yeah. sounds like, I bet he thinks yeah. about that kind of stuff a lot. And Gina Davis just says... Every is, every is cheerios. I don't agree with you, Jeff. You're talking. You're talking out your ass. He's talking out your ass, mate. Um, so she, she runs away at this point. I think she leaves. Oh no, he leaves and he's like, "Fine, I'll find he, someone he, else." He leaves in trousers, a leather jacket, and no t-shirt underneath. A leather he, jacket with a. He's got his yeah. rooster pecs hiding beneath. He's been working and, hard on them. And he's proper walking out like. <laughs> he's sort of walking down the yeah. street like really, really. He's got a really eighties walk going on. He's uh so he finds in the eighties everyone was having arm wrestles in bars. Uh, I think he finds he finds a girl. I can't remember her name actually. Um, uh, Tony, I think. Tony, like yeah. Ta- Tony Owl. Tony, and um, she so she says she's going to go home with one of the arm wrestlers, or she says she's not, or something. Um, and the two arm wrestlers are like Jeff Goblin's eating a chocolate bar. He says, "If I eat one of them, I'm up." <laughs> if I eat one of their heads off, will you go back with me? Yeah. Um, what is, what uh, chocolate bar is he eating? A Yorkie. It's not for girls. Is it a Yorkie? I thought there was. I don't, oh, don't think it is now. Hershey or something. Um, <clears throat> so he gets into this arm wrestle, and I think this is the first proper horror bit we get. Really, like the first gory bit, because he um, he strains. For some reason, there's like white juice coming out of the guy's arm. It of, it uh, kind of looks like that they're gripping each other so tight. I thought it was like sweat. Like yeah, they're why gripping does each the other sweat, like can become creamy. Because it's almost like bub like there's such intense pressure from them doing it that it's like bubbling up. Right. You know what I mean? That's what that's yeah. the impression I got anyway. Not okay. that I, I have that very often. But, but flemmy sweat. Yeah, it happens to me all the time when I get a bit warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh I got the flemmy sweats again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, bloody hell. <laughs> Hand me a towel. Um, and his arm splits the what's that bone called? Not that one. Arm the, bone. Um, the arm, arm bone. <laughs> <laughs> the fib, arm fib, bone fib, splits. Fibula. I think that's right. Yeah, I think you were right. Fibula. Yeah, maybe I'm probably maybe I don't know. The, the arm. Yeah, fibula. so that splits. The bloody bone comes out of the arm, and Jeff Goblin just gets up like he's just done nothing. He goes, "Well, I, I win the woman." Like somehow she's like a prize in this weird yeah. arm wrestle. 
Finds and if, it. And if, I think she doesn't want to be, but at the same time, he's giving us a sort of a certain pheromone, a sort of fly pheromone. And she's attracted uh, to that. A fly pheromone. Attracted to the fly pheromone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he takes her back to the house. They have a night time of, of sexy sex. Sexy sex. <laughs> Staffis, Stanford style sexy sex. Yeah. Um, and then he says, get in the, get in the pod then. <laughs> right? Get in the bloody pod, you slay. There's something I'd like you to do for me. Oh, I'll wash my hands. <laughs> weird, weird. It's a weird, it's a weird role play scenario. Where he's like, get in this telepod, yeah. and uh, and uh, it's going to be quality. You yeah. bloody wait. So yeah, she says, I don't want to. I'm afraid. And then suddenly Veronica's there. What? She got a key or something? She has. I'm assuming she has. And she says, the she says the iconic line because uh, uh, so Seth says, don't be afraid. And he goes, yes, be afraid. Be very afraid. And yeah. then basically. Um, Tawny just leaves. She goes. I had a great night. Does Veronica at this point? Does Does Gina Davis say something went wrong? Like, yeah, you, you look all wrong. You've got weird hairs. Like, oh yeah, at this point he's got like hairs coming out of his face. Um, Dude, like something's got... spots. Yeah, something's not right, mate. Something's not right, mate. You look absolutely hanging. You look <laughs> like you've been. You look like you've been absolutely ruined. Yeah. Rather than rather than the opposite. Uh, so yeah, she basically just does she piss off at some point, and then this is when I think Seth leaves, yeah. starts looking at his hands in the mirror and just. There is a good bit here actually where she says that he's um, like sick or something, and he just turns around and goes, "Sick am I?" and just starts punching the shit out of a wall. Yeah. <laughs> would, a, yeah. would a sick man be able to do this? And I'm like, maybe. he's got a point. He's got yeah. a point. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Termites. Yeah. Termites. Yeah. <laughs> smashing the fuck out of the wall. Um, um, I think it's here he looks on the computer. Mm. No, you are right. I think his fingernails pop off first. He's yeah. like looking at himself boop, going, boop, boop. and his fingernails yeah. pop off. And he starts squeezing the ends of him. It's really yeah, gross. Squeezing, squeezing like pus and shit out of him. Yeah, it's not yeah. very nice. Um, so yeah, he, he's then he then he becomes a little bit, well, something must have gone goes, wrong. I'm dying. Yeah, he goes, am I dying? Holy shit. I think he yeah. looks like really upset he's going to actually die. It's the first time we see he's sort of knocked off his sort of confident uh, mm. pedestal. Uh, and then he goes to the computer. I quite like the computer in this. It looks, um, although it, Although it's kind of old fashioned and doesn't really look like a real computer, it still looks better than the ones in the thing. And yeah, yeah, a lot of those are very easy. It still looks like it could kind of be real. It's, st- it's still one of those computers where, like, you can ask it any hypothetical situation and it seems to have some sort of answer for yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, he basically just asks the telepod, um, the computer, what happened um, when he was te- teleported. And it says that it was confused by the presence of these two life forms. And it merged him with the f- with a housefly. Well, yeah. uh, well, no. Initially, it says it merged him with unknown genetic uh, source, and then obviously, for some reason, it just zooms out and shows you this fly image. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty horrific. It, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's horrific. Good. Seth Brundle's a bit like, oh shit! Oh, f- yeah, he's like, ah, oh, f- fuck. Oh, what was I? I thought I heard it looks like he's. Didn't leave his um, handbrake on the car, rolling yeah. down the street. Oh, <laughs> rolling down the street. Fuck. Do I chase? Do I chase after it? <laughs> bit, bit of humiliating. Do I yeah. pretend it won't? Do I pretend it won't me? Maybe. Yeah. So, okay. so I think I think he it, like some time skips along here, and Seth's like get t- continuing to deteriorate. Like he's losing various body parts. He's got the natural um, history. What does he call it? The Natural History Museum of Brundle. Or something parts, like that. He's got his penis in a jar. In penis the, in a jar. Yeah cupboard yeah um he can because like walk up walk up and down the the wall like spidey man yeah it's uh, uh it's basically knees. all it's like uh the worst i've ever seen it's like michael jackson but like something <laughs> this is like a fuse of the fly and then fuse with michael jackson <laughs> yeah he looks like a sweaty um ball sack a little it bit does. As well. there's something very testicular about his features um, yeah, but uh, so oh yeah, and he does this thing. Where he gets like a donut. He's got his gloves and he goes ah, like vomits up on the food. Yeah, and he goes, oh sorry, that's disgusting. And she's like, yeah, it was. And his ear just pops off. <laughs> yeah, it's like she's turned up at exactly the right time for for all the action to be happening, which is vomiting on his food, running up and down the wall, and then his ear just pops up. Oh that's, my bloody ear! So they just needed like a comedy because it's yeah. waste, oh sorry, that's disgusting. Yeah, it was. Yeah, right but, but then obviously there's there's a horrible <laughs> bit. But this is the bit where he sort of says, "I'm scared," and she hugs him, and he looks like he he shit himself now. Like I think before he was kind of like not enjoying it, but he was kind of like, oh, "Bloody hell, I can run up the wall." 
look at this this is mental i mean and yeah so he, he thinks of it like as a bizarre stage of cancer didn't he, Does he know yeah he's, yeah um i think so he's just gonna die uh, at some point but mm. um and then she leaves and i think it's around here that she realizes she's pregnant and she tells yep. Staphis, and then she has a dream about giving birth to a sort of lava fly lava worm yeah, thing. horrible big giant yeah. maggot type thing yeah maggot. with jeff yeah. with jeff goblin's voice wow no no <laughs> <laughs> i always hey. did it oh wilson then hey mummy ha 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 life ha, uh, yeah. finds a way yeah Far, hmm, finds a yeah exactly so she's basically her staff is to persuade a doctor to give her an abortion like in the middle of the night hmm. um but then she's going to tell him but she yeah. can't bring because here's like he's like really like turning cause he's like um his face is getting worse and worse and he he says he talks about like inset politics and how um yeah. yeah so this is another sort of like iconic um, this bit, bit really got to me like, I don't know if it was the way <clears> yeah. the music he looked really sad his teeth was all like falling out now yeah like, he was like looked like he's coming to terms with the fact that he wasn't really Seth anymore so he's really losing his humanity now we sort of see we've seen it sort of like deplete throughout the last sort of part of the film and he's really lo- losing it and he understands and he's talking about insects he says basically got no compassion no compromise uh, no compromise the insect basically can't be tr- trusted and he said yeah. uh, he'd like to become the first insect politician That's, he does yeah. say that at some point doesn't he yeah but he says but like he that... says like you need to you need to go he also had like the 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 the, the, the best line in the film um what was it? I'm an I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it, but now the insect is awake. And yeah, like, but the school... banana dream is over and the insect is yeah, awake. That's the one. And yeah. She's like, I don't understand what you mean, and he's like, What I'm saying is, I'll hurt you if you stay. Yeah, but it's so good. I don't know what it is. There's something really sad about it, and like really, like the pathos yeah. is like so palpable, and the music, the score, Jeff Goblin's performance, both of the performances. It's because this, like, is the, this this is all but... the, also the moment where he's thinking, this is the last time I'm going to see her. Because he's yeah. telling you, telling her to go. He's thinking this is the last time I'm ever going to see her, and she's even she like seeing him in this state is a bit like, no, don't yeah. say that. I just anything but that. But I, I yeah. actually think, in terms of all the films we've watched in this podcast, I think that was like one of the most powerful. The bits I was watching, I was like, wow, that was just like yeah, great, yeah. just perfect cinema. It's just so good. Um, <clears throat> so now she goes to Stafford takes her to um, the. Coat hanger man, what's it called? Uh, abortionist. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> um, just a, just a doctor, I think, but <laughs> abortionist. But she's like, I need the guy's like, we can't do this. I don't want to have the baby. And he's like, no, I just, I just want it out of me. It's it's a fucking maggot. Get it out of me. Yeah, so basically he says like, we got reason to believe that the the father of the child is deformed, and we also got realized a reason to believe that the child's deformed. Doctor says, what well, tests we can do and stuff? She's like, I don't give a flying fuck about tests. Get yeah. this baby out of me now, you bastard. Yeah. Yeah, she, she becomes like really common for some reason. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, um, uh, so, oh yeah, so as she's uh, about to have it done, Seth, the Brundlefly, pops in through the window uh, and kidnaps yeah, so her. He, so he overheard that conversation earlier when they get in the car talking about the abortion. He basically kidnaps her, but again, this is another moment where, I mean, he looks even worse now. He looks even more testicular and yeah. bloated. I'm bloated, and is he naked now? Is he walking around? He ain't got any clothes on now, is he? No, he's been naked for a while now. I think, yeah. Is he? He's been <laughs> naked for like no one. No one makes that. No, no one talks about that moment. It's like you're just naked now. Well, like I know your knobs falling off, but <laughs> and you've got nothing to show. But still, yeah. So basically, obviously, he's another moment. A lot of this film, actually, see yeah. far too much of his chest. Yeah, <laughs> and he does say. Um, so basically, she he wants her to carry the baby full term because it's the last. Of Seth Brundle left, the last of his humanity. He's he's busy turning into a fly. Please don't um, kill the last of me, Veronica. Please, yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, then he says, like, right, right, you know, "Okay, I'm going to fuse us then. Fuck it. If yeah, you don't yeah. Keep if, the baby. I'll fuse us. I'll fuse all of us together, all three of us, into a lovely family unit. Got a problem with that? Take it up with someone else, because I'm going to do it. Yeah. So as he's getting ready to do that, Stanfist turns up with a shotgun. Um. Oh yeah, so I think as she's about to push him in, is this when he, yep. she rips his jaw off, or he's turning more and more into a fly at this point? Anyway, so I think I think it might be around here. Stanfist turns up and he takes the shotgun off Stanfist. He vomits onto his hand. And at this mm. point, he doesn't seem very human at all. 
Um, and then I found this like really disturbing. I found myself onto his foot, and the guy's like freaking out, stamping his father. And yeah, then, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. and he's, he's about like... to take him out. Uh, he's going to vomit on his face or throat or something. Uh, really, really disturbing stuff. <laughs> Not pleasant at all, actually. Surprisingly. Uh, and then she said, "Don't do it." I'll did she say I'll get in the pod or something, or just just don't. Yeah, she was, don't, don't 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 vomit on his bloody face. Like, look at the state oh, of his hand. Not in the look at the house. Look at the state of his hand. And look at the state of his foot. You want you imagine his head like that? You can't just bin bag him like the baboon. Yeah, you have to um, go through pr- pr- correct procedures when you murder someone. So, as she, as he's trying to push her into the telepod, I think it's around here where she sort of like shoves his chin, and his yeah. his chin falls away, and then his mm-hmm. eyes, his face starts to bloom and his eyes like pop and like white pus yeah. comes out so it's insane like the the special the, the creature effects actually yeah. i think it might be actually better than american world for london and that that was pretty fantastic oh wow but the, the way yeah. the face sort of blooms out like that and the eyes come away and so and the, the it's hor- it is horrible like, i mean it is really, really horrible. horrible it's like yeah this is this is disgusting legs yeah. start sort of falling away meat just like falling off the legs as, as yeah. they kind of turn into little insectoid um legs, legs. and shit <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh but then um she push oh yeah, so he locks her in the left telepod. He gets in the right one, but yeah. what's his face? Stand Stanfist. Fist. Stand fist with his one arm and his one leg. Keep shoots moving. Shoots the cable and disconnects it. Disconnects yeah. the USB port. On <laughs> yeah. the left the most the left pod, the left speaker. Yeah. Um and then so oh and then what's his name? He tries to get out and as as the, the process happens um, it takes off half the door and stuff of it as well. Yeah, um, so he kind of so he, he's already half man, half fly, but now he's been te- he's been fused with he's half pod. So he kind of like yeah. he falls he's out of the pod, pod and it's quite yeah. horrible. He's like Argh! like a horrible yeah. horrible roar as he sort of falls down. He's just a monster, just covered. I'm I mean, there's no <laughs> yeah. I'm purified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and it's then, pretty uh, she. Goes to point the shotgun at him, but she can't do it. And then he, his last yeah. act of humanity is to sort of ask her to puts the gun to his head, the barrel to his head, and then she shoots it. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't be the way he imagined him going. You know, when you're like probably a few years ago, he's like I'm a quality scientist, living the life. Was like probably <laughs> develop <laughs> testicular cancer or something at some point. It just happens, doesn't it? But at, at no point in his life was he thinking, yeah, I might end up like a third pod. <laughs> <laughs> for, with like a fly face and maybe, yeah and then, you know, and then my, then, then my ex girlfriend's or current girlfriend you know we didn't really ever end it she's yeah, gonna yeah. shotgun my face off I mean it's a good way to go yeah I mean Brundle fly telepod creature yeah if you went on like you know those websites where you, you put how I'm gonna die and it said you're gonna get turned into like a half fly creature thing and you're gonna get your face blown off he'd be like no oh, right that's nah, bullshit but um, okay, and that's how it ends. It fades to black. The music, the score builds and rises, and it's um, it's just a good film. Just that's it. Uh, right, dude, ready for some trivia? Yeah. Uh, okay, number one. Uh, Jeff Goldenblum sent who uh, as part of the promotion or after the film was done. He sent who a letter saying, "I hope you like it as much as I liked yours." Yeah, who is he sending that letter to? Um. Whoever was in the the original one, the original fly, That's it great. is it well, is. Can you name who it is? But it's Vin- Vincent Price. Yes, yeah. So it's Vincent Price. Vincent Price said he liked it up to a point uh, where he went too far. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think um, heard that somewhere before. Yeah. Number two, who in the crew won an Academy Award for their work on the film? Who in the crew? Mm. The baboon. Yes, Ben the baboon. <laughs> Bagged himself the a big bad busker. No, he, it was, um, <laughs> was it, wait, wait, wait. Was it? It's got to be. It's got to be the uh, the special effects, yeah. Yeah, make, it was make quite as Charles Wallace. Really, like when the credits roll, the first thing that's, that pops up is special thanks to Charles Wallace. Oh right, okay. yeah. Before it said they like David Cronenberg or anything. That's probably, that's probably why he won then. <laughs> They're like, God, he's got to be bloody yeah, important. He's first on the credits. the credits. First build it, yeah. Um, number five, number three, even. You got that. Uh, who originally was in talks to direct this remake of The Flyer? Was it A, Tim Burton? Was it B, Stuart Gordon, who made Reanimate It? 
or was it C, Kesha? Kesha? What Kesha from, from the famous TikTok song? Yes. Yes. Uh, Tim Burton? Even though this is a few years before Batman, isn't it? Yeah, it was Tim Burton. Uh, I, thought, I thought you might go for Stuart Gordon, because he's in you know, body horror. It's, uh, thought, yeah, yeah, standing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought when you said that, it felt like it was one of those... It was it was a Luke Condorism that you just put in there. It, well, yeah. Uh, so the Tim Burton one, I imagine, would still be good, but be very different. It'd yeah. Be very it'd, basically, it'd basically be Johnny Depp with like little antenna It would on. be Johnny Depp, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, David Cronenberg makes a guest appearance in this film. Can you David say, Cronenberg. Can you say who he is he, he played in the film? Baboon? No, not quite. He's, he's in a baboon costume. Uh, I can't even think of who, anyone else who's in this. Is he at the party at the start? No, it's uh, he played the gynecologist who takes the worm from her. Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. You don't see his face. You hear his voice a little bit, but he's got like, oh. the, the the face. Oh, mask he's got like, the mask on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got um, it. I got it. And last question, but not the least question: How many pounds of prosthetic was Golden Bloom wearing? How many pounds of prosthetic? Yeah. Uh, 15 pounds. It's quite a lot, actually. Close. It was five pounds. So you were one off. I was only one off. I was (laughs) only one away. Exactly. (laughs) Five pounds. Well, you better not be complaining. Yeah, five quid's worth. Um, (laughs) (laughs) All right, dude. Uh, You need to rate the film. Oh, Oh, it's a toughie, isn't it? This is a toughie. I mean... As as you explained earlier, there's so many moments of like perfect cinema in this, and it kind of all just comes together. And never do you once feel that like a moment's wasted or a or a, a scene's wasted. Do you know what I mean? The plot is just kind of inter interwoven sort of perfectly. Great performances, great music, great special effects. Uh, I'm kind of thinking I want to give it the highest rating possible, but I'm thinking about what it would stand up against in terms of what else I've done. But it's still one of those films that I always want to watch, so yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go for an A plus. Why not? Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So I I I always like this film, um, and but sometimes like you know you say you can never cross the same river twice because sometimes you go into something and for whatever reason it strikes you differently as it did in different parts of different points of your life. For whatever reason, this like absolutely like blew me away watching it. I think it might be one of my favorite film viewing experiences of the year. And I was oh, like, this yeah, is man. amazing. Now that bit where um, he's, he says the famous line, like, the, the, the fly is awake. Yeah. Whatever it was. I the was insect like, is awake. Wow, Jesus Christ. Like, it was so good. I was genuinely... You pulled, your, you pulled your trousers up and you went, that is a good like, moment. Take, you can teleport these now. Put these <laughs> in the microwave. I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to give it an A plus as well. I thought it was, it was oh, amazing. Man. Seriously Wonderful. amazing. I was yeah. kind of thinking I was going to give it an A. Mm. I was thinking of that, but I think it's just it's just one of those films that, like, I mean, even today I was discussing it with some people and just sort of remembering how good it was. And it's like, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, I mean, I'm sure people have, but like when I ever discuss these films with people, I've never, no one's ever said, this fly, what a load of nonsense. Everyone just goes, oh, yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Well, Poor it old... On the Facebook group, we did a, a poll ages ago, a year and a half ago or something, asking if we did any honorable mentions, what would be, like, a, what would you want? And this one was the most voted for, I think. So the fly obviously is sort of high in high regard. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's uh, it's wondrous, isn't it? Yeah, man. it is bloody wondrous. So next week we'll do another honorable mention. We'll do mine. Um, I haven't actually decided what it's going to be. Yet. I think I know it's going to be, but I just thought we check tonight because I don't want to, you know, play my cards just yet. But um, so you, the listeners will have to wait and find out, and I'll let you know later tonight so you can watch it. Oh. Wow, that's uh, that's cheeky. Yeah, that's uh, intense. Well, I'm a cheeky chappy. I don't cheeky, trust you. Cheeky chappy who chipped the chocolate. You know, cheeky cheeky <laughs> chappy chop. Can't do that anymore. No. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver dot com. Um, become a patron over at patreon dot com um, forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Thanks to Kovacs Cameron for our theme music. Thanks to Acast for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five star rating review on iTunes and remember to subscribe. And thanks to my co-host Ben for being a real fly dude. Oh, I feel pretty fly. Thanks, mate. Cheers for being a a gold bloom of a man. A baboon of a 
but <laughs> doesn't, right. doesn't doesn't quite work, but it felt good in my head. Yeah. All right. See you later. <laughs>